So let's discuss allylic fluorobromination using MBS. So let's suppose we begin with the following picture. Let's say we have the following starting material, cyclohexane, and let's suppose we want to produce the following product A from cyclohexene. What is one way we can produce product A? Well, if we take diatomic Br2, so our bromine molecule, and we reacted with this cyclohexene in the presence of light, we produce product A. The only problem with using these reagents is that when there is too much of this Br2, our product A will easily interconvert, convert to our product B, a dihalide. Suppose we don't want product B. Suppose we only want product A. What is one solution to our problem? Well, one solution is to limit, to decrease the amount of bromide or bromine present in our mixture. In other words, if we don't have enough bromine reacting in our reaction, A will not convert to B. A will stay at A. So one solution is to use NBS. NBS or n bromosuccinamide decreases or limits the concentration of our bromine. Now it has the formula of or it has a structure shown here. So this is MBS, we have a five membered ring, we have the N attached to our bromide, we have two doubly bonded oxygens, two carbons opposing one another. Let's suppose we take MBS and we mix it with our cyclohexene in the presence of trace amount of HBr in the solvent carbon tetrachloride and in the presence of light. We will produce strictly product A and not product B because what NBS does is it limits the concentration of bromide so that we don't have enough bromide to go from A to B. So what is the reaction mechanism? So let's begin with our NBS. In the first step, NBS acts as a Lewis base. A lone pair of electrons on either of these oxygens takes away, abstracts this H atom, kicking off this bond, breaking this bond, and the pair of electrons end up on our bromide and ion. Now, the H ends up on this oxygen, so now we have a positive charge on the top oxygen. In the second step, what happens is this ion now acts as a Lewis base or a nucleophile, kicking off this bromide, kicking off this uh, bond, and now this bond makes a double bond, a pi bond, between N and our carbon, and also, this carbon O bond, the pi bond, breaks off and the lone pair of electron goes on this oxygen. And now, we no longer have a positive charge on this oxygen. And we have a double, a double bond between N and carbon and we form the following diatomic Br2. So we have our bromine. And now this bromine, in the presence of light, dissociates. The two electrons move apart, forming two chain-carrying radicals. And now one of this chain-carrying radical interacts with our initial starting material, taking away this H atom. Why this H atom and not any other H atom? Well, because this H atom and this H atom their two identical H atoms are the only ones that produce resonance stabilized structures. So notice that we have resonance stabilization or delocalization of this electron from this carbon to this carbon. This will be relatively stabilizing effect. And we also form an HBr molecule. Now, in the final step, we have one of these molecules, let's say this molecule, well actually this molecule is one molecule. The actual structure of this resonance stabilized molecule is somewhere in between these two. But let's say, for instance, we take this one. Now what happens in the last step is we have another bromine molecule interact with this um, chain carrying radical, lone pair of electron and a lone pair of electron from this interact forming a bond forming this final product A along with our chain carrying bromine. So once again, what NBS or n bromosuccinamide does is it limits the concentration of our bromine so that we stay at A and don't go to B.